I know you've been uh, you've been training here in town for this fight. What how's that gone, and what made that decision for you? It's phenomenal. Um, what really made the decision for me was the coaches down here, just exceptional. Um, you know, working with Jimmy Gifford, who just um, hit holding mitts for me. You know, um, he's helped my striking immensely. I feel so confident, much better in my hands. You know, no more, no more pedaling those punches. So that's great. Um, been working with Robert Follis, who's one of the head coaches over at uh, Extreme Couture. Great mental coach, great MMA strategist, Ricky Lundell phenomenal coach as well great ground game and last but not least you know Brian Caraway he's been with me my entire career and knows me the best so you know I got that emotional support on that and it's just feels like you know finally I have the perfect mixture and like a full solid team of coaches. Did you connect with all those guys during the Ultimate Fighter or I guess how did it just come together? How did you meet them all and start working with them? Oh um, you know Ricky we actually uh, met back in 2008 I went to uh, Switzerland to grapple in the, the FILA World Grappling Championships, and um, he was on the team as well. So I met him way back then, and then he's just really progressed his career since then. So um, found out he was here in Vegas, and Brian reached out to him to see if he would want to come on as one of the coaches. As far as the other coaches, um, you know, Gifford, I met him. Um, I met him at the Red Rock Gym. So, you know, he, he holds for Lorenzo and, you know, a couple, Frank, Frank mm -hmm. Mir and stuff. So him and, um, you know, Robert Follis, I knew from Portland. We're all from the Northwest. Brian I met in college so right. now that the fight is just you know next weekend here how much anticipation is there for you right ahead of the fight you know what I'm I just want it to be like the day after the fight already you know what I mean I, I'm so looking forward to this fight I'm looking forward to entering 2014 as a champion and it's also exciting for me I've I've just never felt so good about a training camp I've never felt like it all came together at the right time you know and um, as much as I wanted to win the first fight around, uh, you know, with Ronda, I think it almost worked out better this way. You know what I mean? Because I'm going to win it this time, and it's a bigger, better fight. So it's, it's really awesome. It's been like almost the whole year talking about Ronda. Uh, how does, does it feel right now that it's really close to the fight? You know, how is how is your emotion right now? I feel great. I feel totally at peace. I feel calm. You know, I'm excited. I feel like I have all the right emotions, like mentally stable and emotionally stable, and. I've never felt more ready, so you know, there's no other time in my life that I would want this fight to happen than right now. You know, it feels great. You said in the past that in that first fight you were kind of uh, over emotion. Do, do you see that way still? I don't see it that way at all anymore. You know, I just let it go. You know, um, she she had mental warfare as one of her arsenals the first time we fought, and I didn't. You know, it wasn't a weapon on my tool belt, but it's something that I learned the hard way. And um, you know, I don't consider it a mistake anymore. I consider it a learning experience. So I learned a lot from that fight, not only as a fighter, how to be more technically sound, but also, you know, how to grow and be more more mature as a person. And, um, you know, I just let go of those feelings of animosity. You know, that was a choice on my part, and so is happiness, and I'm happy right now. You know, I'm right where I want to be. If you learned mental warfare, do you think you learned it from her? Yeah, a <laughs> huge part, yeah. I have to give her credit where credit is due, you know. She definitely taught me something in that area. And, um, you know, I don't play it the same way that she does. But, you know, I have developed a skill set to deal with it nonetheless. And, um, you know, I think that's exactly what I did when I had to spend six weeks with her day in and day out. And she was just nasty and, and mean and horrible to deal with. You know, there has to be a way that you deal with, you know, you learn to deal with it. And for me, it needed to be different than the first time where I just got sucked into it. And I was the one angry all the time and she was the one laughing at me like being like you know this girl's so pissed off and I was um, and then I just got over it and I was like you know what I can't blame anybody but myself for losing that fight and I can't you know point the finger at her and say you know she shouldn't have accomplished the things that she's accomplished because she has so she she has my respect in that area but you know for me um, you know it's not about her anymore so she has my respect as a fighter and as an athlete and uh, that's about it. Do you think she kind of tipped her hand a little bit during the filming? I mean, if you go back and watch, I mean, I'm sure you did, and she's in there saying, well, this is this is her getting used to losing. You know, I want her in her brain that she's, I mean, you're kind of, you're putting it out there that it's all, uh, it's more for show than it is the real animosity maybe. Was that easier to compartmentalize on your part? I'm not sure if I understand your question. Rhonda kind of tipping her hand by saying on the show that all of this was mental warfare, that she right. was going out of her way to make right. it uncomfortable for you. Right. Was that kind of, going back and watching it, you were like, oh, well, that, that's where all that's coming from. No, I knew, I learned that, like, way back since the first fight, you know. Um, I didn't know it at the time, but then afterwards, you know, um, she says that she's not fake, you know, she's team real mean and right. whatever. Like, she's she's been so many which ways emotionally unstable, and, and 
I remember when I used to be legitimately pissed off and upset, like immediately after I won that title fight, I would see her at Strike Force events and she would come purposely right up to me and be like, hey buddy, how are you? How are you, Brian? What's up guys? How are you? Like trying to hang out and I was like, oh, I hate this girl. Like, so you think it was you know back what I mean? then even? Oh yeah, for sure, you know, and, and she used to be the fakest of fake, fake people, like ever, you know, and then she gets on the Ultimate Fighter and what happened is that she was no longer able to manipulate me the way she was before. So before she would come up to me and be this super, super fake nice and I would get pissed and put a scowl on my face and it'd be like the sun went away and all of a sudden, you know, I was in a black hole of hell as soon as she walked into the room, that's what it felt like. And then as soon as I let go of that and I made the choice that I wasn't going to be dictated by her anymore, then all of a sudden it seemed to work in reverse, you know. I didn't do it with that intention, I did it because I just wanted to take that weight off of my shoulders and I didn't want to be that way anymore. It's not fun to be miserable and depressed and, and she was turning the sport into something that I didn't love anymore as she was making it horrible, you know, I didn't like it. So I had to change my frame of mind and basically what happened is then the roles reversed so she couldn't walk in and be nice because I was nice to her. She walked in and be nice and we'd be friends, right? As my grandma always said, come <laughs> so, with kindness. <laughs> exactly, you know, so, and um, it wasn't, like I said, an effort to try to piss her off. Mm -hmm. It was just me trying to be real, you know, and not, not be the way that it used to be. Change it, you know, and, um, you know, then, it, like I said, it worked in reverse. And then she started being the one who was pissed off because her mental warfare wasn't working anymore. And that's kind of what you guys saw on the Ultimate Fighter. And that's a lesson that can help you for the rest of your career. Mm -hmm. It's not just Absolutely. for Absolutely. Yeah, it's a life learning lesson. You know, it's, it's helped me in more than just, you know, the rivalry with Ron and myself, but it, like I said, my, I feel like my maturity level has reached the, the point of where my skill set, you know, they've finally reached an equalization, so I feel very balanced on both levels, and it's just a really great feeling. What was your favorite moment inside the house? My favorite moment inside the house? Um, I mean, we had a lot of great moments. Um, I think, you know, with, with my team, bonding with my team was great. Um, probably one of the funnest moments for me was when we attacked the house with Silly String. You know, that was great, just to kind of break up the tension, and I threw a bunch of silly string cans everywhere for, for the team to get them, and it just came in and sprayed them and scared the crap out of them because they didn't know we were coming, and that was really great. That was super fun. Aside from all the mental warfare that's going on, you've done a lot of preparation here with judo and working a lot with uh, different kind of specialists to get your game to a level where you can be really competitive there. Uh, what do you think was the best aspect of this training camp for you? Oh my gosh, there's so many amazing ones, but um, I think the best aspect was probably bringing, like I said, judo experts over to be a part of my camp, you know, in combination with having such a strong team around me, you know, strong coaches and everybody who really built me up and, and made me feel awesome about this training camp and, and took everything that I needed into consideration. And, um, you know, it's so important for me to win this fight and it feels like it's just as important to them. And that's awesome because as coaches, you know, it, if I've had the feeling before working with different coaches that they didn't care as much as I did. And that sucks. You know, for me, this is the biggest opportunity in my life. And each and every one of my coaches texts me on a daily basis. They reach out to me. They want to make sure that I'm feeling good, that I'm doing good. And, and they care, you know, and that, that, that's an amazing feeling. And, um, yeah, I don't know. I kind of lost track of my question. Yeah. A lot of people also say that we haven't really seen Rhonda on her back in an adversity. How much is it of a goal of yours to take it to the ground with the wrestling that you have that we know is the strength of yours? You know what? I'm prepared to do anything necessary to win this fight. I've trained everything. You know, obviously I do have the wrestling background. I feel like I have a very strong ground game that's really underestimated. So I've been sharpening the things that I feel like I need to. But, um, you know, I really want to just, I want to punch her. <laughs> and I, I would love nothing more than to get my first, like, clean knockout with my hands uh, on national television on the biggest pay-per-view. You know, it's anticipated to be the biggest pay-per-view on UFC 168. So um, that would be amazing for me. You know, I'd love it if she would stand and trade with me, but I don't think that she'll want to. So we'll see what happens. Do you, you feel like you're totally immune to whatever she says now? I mean, just like you, she's kind of making the media rounds in the last couple of days. She's started insulting you more. I mean, does it not bother you at all? Does it frustrate you, make you want to hit her more or anything? Nah. You know, I mean, I, I'm never going to offer her to come over and bake cupcakes with me or anything like that. But, um, you know, I, she's just going to be a body, a body in the way of my title. And that's the way I want to keep it. You know, I want to stay emotionally uninvested. Um, you know, I, I want to get the knockout because I want to prove that I'm that much better than her, you know. And um, that's just a personal goal, you know. It doesn't necessarily have to do with the fact that she is, you know, somewhat of an arch nemesis. Oh, yeah. Just what I want to do. How difficult is it for you to stay emotionally uninvested in this? Well, it was really challenging at first, so it's taken me quite a long time to get better at it. But I think the Ultimate Fighter was a blessing in disguise because I got a lot of practice at it. 
keeping my cool and staying staying uh, grounded and not getting wrapped them to, into it. You know, I think that if I would have flown off the handle and told her off and flipped her off, that she would have had peace of mind with that. So the fact that I was able to stick to my guns and stay true to myself, I think frustrated her more. And I think it worked as a double positive for me and a double negative for her. Well, you still have uh, your moments, though, where you really enjoy beating her because you took particular joy on Twitter and tweeting out the picture with the Harley Davidson saying it was worth it with all these middle fingers, I'm going to post yeah. this here. So you still have your moments with that, correct? I mean, that was just me, like, saying, you know what? Like, I'm proud of myself and I'm proud of my team because we did it the right way. You know, we stayed humble. We weren't the ones talking trash. Um, you know, Chris Holdsworth wasn't talking trash. Juliana wasn't the one saying that, oh, Shayna doesn't deserve to breathe the same air as me. I mean, that was really taking it a step too far. Like, well, like 10 steps too far. I thought that was very insulting of uh, Rhonda to say. And, um, you know, it, we were kind of like, I guess somewhat bullied a little bit, I guess you could say almost. And so it's kind of like rewarding, like seeing that light at the end of the tunnel that you don't have to be the big bad guy to win out. You know, the nice guy doesn't always lose. <laughs> Given all the things you said about how well your training camp went, does this kind of feel like home now? You think this will be what you're doing for the rest of your career, training down here before class? I'm definitely open to that, you know, but I do have another half, and that's Brian Caraway, and he needs to feel confident wherever he's training too. But as far as I can tell, he really, really likes it down here, so we are open to the, the idea of moving and staying here in Vegas. You mentioned all the different coaches here. Has there been like a home base, or has it been just kind of wandering around all the different gyms? Oh, no, we've pretty much trained primarily at uh, Extreme Couture. You know, we did train a little bit more at the beginning when we were filling it out at Syndicate, also a great gym. Um, and I've done some, some private training out at the Red Rock private UFC gym there. But other than that, all the team practices and main sparring sessions have been at Extreme Couture. You talked about the, the, mental, the mental stuff that you learned in the first fight. Mm -hmm. What about physically from the fight? What, what can you take from that and, and what can you use from that fight in this one? Well, I know what it feels like to be in there with her, you know, so when something's unknown, it's more intimidating than it is like when you have a grasp of what you're getting into, you know, so I know exactly what I'm getting into. Um, you know, I've seen her fight enough times now and I've been in there, I've felt her strength, I've felt her strengths, her power, um, you know, and the way that she does the arm bar is a little different than what a traditional arm bar would be, how it would be done. So things that I just wasn't aware of the first time and again, you know, I made the physical errors and physical mistakes, I think, because I was out of my emotional element. So, you know, I, the game plan was not to run into her judo throw. That's exactly what I did as I felt the round coming to a close. She was breathing really, really hard, and I was like, oh, man, she's so tired. I'm going to put a statement on the end of this round, and I'm going to make her not want to come out for the second round. And I just went, like, pew, like, like pedaling my punches right into that, that throw. So, you know, I just got a little away from the game plan, a little overzealous. Was part of that maybe because you noticed that you had hurt her in that round and that it was time for you to become more aggressive or was it just a mental lapse in the fight itself as far as the adrenaline? It just was like I like I smelt blood, like a shark smelling blood and water. You know, I escaped one of her arm bars and um, we scrambled and we got back to the feet. I had taken her back at one point, so I was feeling really good. I was like, man, I'm, I'm on fire. Like this chick, you know, yeah, it's competitive, but... I got this, you know, and I'm going to I'm going to hit her really hard in this last minute and I'm going to make sure that she does not want to come out for the second round. And I just went at her, you know, as hard as I could. And like I said, you know, I, I didn't pay attention to the, the distance ratio. I didn't, um, you know, I just got overzealous, you know, like I said, I wanted to I wanted to put a statement on that round and I got a little carried away. <laughs> yeah, I think she's going to come up with the same game plan. I have no idea, honestly. You know, I mean, all of her fights would lead me to think so, like, but um, I think that I have to be ready for anything. And I think that when she's not able to do what she wants to do, she's going to have to revert to other things anyways. So I'm, I'm going to be in uncharted territory either way. I look at it, you know, so I'm going to stick with it and, um, you know, do what I can to keep the fight where I want it, you know what I mean? So. Do you think she might want to be trying to keep that armbar streak intact and that's something you can play on? Do I think what? That she might want to continue that arm bar streak and that's something oh. you can take advantage of? Yeah, I'm sure if it's there, like, she'll want to go for it, you know, and I think that she would be wanting to brag that she did the same thing again, you that's know? I think, you think she's going to try to continue that? Probably. I would think that, um, 
I would think that, that Ronda is about proving points, you know what I mean? And, and I think that she's hard-headed, and so, um, you know, she could go out there and be bold enough to want to stand with me. I don't know. Maybe she wants to prove a point there. Maybe she wants to prove a point in trying to, to get the arm bar. But either way, like, you know, I can't focus on that, you know what I mean? I have to focus on how I'm going to beat the champion, and you can't beat the champion by defending an arm bar for five rounds. Like, you have to go out there and be better than her. So on the 28th, I have to be better than Ronda Rousey in every area. You said that she's not an unknown anymore because you've been in there with her, but do you think she was as good as you thought or better or not as good as you maybe thought she would be? Um, I think she's better than I thought she was going to be when I was in there the first time. You know, um, I think I underestimated her a little bit because I was too busy discrediting her, saying, you know, that she doesn't deserve the title shot and whatnot. And, um, you know, it, it wasn't meant, you know, I think it was taking a little out of context, you know, that I didn't mean that she doesn't have the skill set. I just mean that there's a pecking order and, you know, that there was girls that had put in a lot more time in the sport and a lot more work at that time that I felt like deserved the title shot more than Rhonda. But she kind of leapfrogged and came out of nowhere and jumped over a few people that I thought were in line ahead of her. And that's what I meant by that, you know. So it doesn't matter, you know, there could be a girl out there right now that's an amateur that could beat me or Rhonda, like let's say you know but does she just get to step in and fight for the title no like she has to prove herself and that was my point i just thought that she hadn't proven herself enough to earn the title shot so besides the animosity between you two what did you think of her as a coach during the tough um i don't you know i don't really know because i wasn't like in the room with when they were coaching and um you know i wasn't paying attention really what she was saying either it gets loud in the gym so it's hard for me to really assess like how she was as a coach but um you know i don't really know i mean i think her team seems satisfied with, with her and her coaches so i'm not gonna you know stick pins or jabs there i don't really know so all that you said about the arm bar and how that can't be your focus because you got to think about what you're going to do does that mean did, did you train less for defending the arm bar this time i mean confident that you could um I mean, I, it's something that I have to be aware of, but if I get in the arm bar, I mean, I feel like the odds are, you know, the odds are going to be in her favor. So I need to get, I need to be working on the things that prevent it from getting there. Like, let's say, okay, start me in an arm bar. Okay, go, get out. Like, 2% chance, come on. Like, I need to stop it from happening. I can't be like, okay, start in an arm bar, work my escapes, because then what am I planning for? I'm planning to be in an armbar. I'm not planning to be in an armbar this fight. You know, yeah, I'm aware of it. I know all the escapes, but I'm planning to win this fight. So that means not getting to that position. Is that different than the, the first time you fought her? Did you yeah, feel we, like you more started in that position, tried to get out of it? Yeah. I mean, I think we focused on it a little bit more than than this than that um, than this time. So you know, just just learning and growing again. What do you think is going to happen in the fight between Anderson Silva and Weidman? What do I think is going to happen? Oh my gosh, you know, that's such a such a tough fight to call because Anderson has proven that he's one of the baddest men on this planet and I think that after defending his title so many times it just gets heavier and heavier each time it has to. You know, I can only imagine that the amount of pressure that he has to keep up with for every fight and always fighting the next best guy. You know, as a champion you never get any easy fights, you never get any builder fights, you never get any breaks. You're always fighting the next best guy who's hungry and so I think maybe now that he lost the title you know he's going to be coming back like with a whole new like outlook on everything and um, I'm sure he's hungry you know I'm sure he wants to get back there and prove that you know he's not finished in this sport so I don't know what's going to happen but I'm definitely expecting it's going to be a really good fight. What was your immediate reaction when you heard the UFC was bringing in 115 pound women? I was stoked I think it's great I think the 115 pound women are awesome um, I think they put on some really entertaining fights, and I think that the fact that they're bringing more women in is always a plus. It's always good. Do you have any sense of, like, burden? Ronda Rousey seems to carry the sense of burden that she has to grow women's MMA. Do you feel like you have that same sense? Uh, I wouldn't call it a burden. You know, I would say that, yeah, I feel a responsibility. Absolutely, you know, but um, I'm totally happy and, and willing to do that. You know, this is something that I've loved and worked for for a long time, and I would never take for granted where I'm at in this sport and, and be thankful for the things that, that have come my way, you know, and the, the things that I've earned. Um, you know, I, I could never look at it any other way than being, you know, thankful and appreciative.